Tick tock, it's Titan time. Sure, we got head, but now it's time to embrace an appreciation of feet. I'm making Warlord Titan feet and everything is going to go 100% perfectly to plan. Press like on the video now in anticipation of perfection. Look at these bits. These bits will soon become toes and toes accessories. There's some cylindrical bits for like pistons and then various plastic wedges for the actual toe bit. Okay, look at these. Get out of here. These old plastic furniture feet have some high potential. They have a good wedge shape. Remember that the Warlord Titan has a highly desirable four toe pattern, just like the OG Pewter Dreadnought, the greatest model Games Workshop could ever hope to produce. They have this bottom peg attachment point. Let's saw that off. With the razor saw? Nope. Bigger saw? After almost no time, the peg easily comes free. Then I tidy up the remaining stump with clipping and rasping. It's a bit wonky, but it sits flat. Let's do a scale check. Yep, it is a scale. With that confirmed, I start to test out various accoutrements for the wedge. After testing and rejecting several shaped plastics, I come across this piece of a printer. Can you see it? I quickly liberate the bit from its printer prison. Ah, just as I expected, a perfect fit. Clean this up a bit until it sits flat. Nice. I have this orange thing from a pneumatic crane toy. I think this will make a good foot pad rim thing. I'll clip that down to sit flat. Oh no, the first major hurdle. Even with my perfect matrix vision, this toe holder bit has a slightly rounded interface, so the toe's all wombly and slidey. Solution? Bread tab. Okay, this orange shoe sole needs a patch job. Get the mug. I'm filling these rounded gaps and then, well, you'll see. I use acrylic paste as a base since it has good adhesion to plastic. With that dry, out comes the spackle. Spackle sticks to the acrylic paste. Paste for adhesion, spackle for fileability. That's right, I'm going to file this, like this. Now what was a hole is just a neat indented surface detail. And we fill in this outer rim with a grippy sole tread made from transformer bits. Mega blocks always play the heel in my builds and this will be no different. Add the top wedge onto the bottom orange thing, then this little wheel as a toe joint. Some gaps need filling here. Again, the combo of acrylic paste and spackle is employed. Now I slash and shave and scrape and file to get that all nice and flush. I want a piston to attach to the top of the toe and that should have some kind of cover near the base. This little toy bit coincidentally fits nicely into the top of the toe. Let's slap some little rivets on there. My new epic method for rivet application is to use this custom glue tool to place a tiny dot of super glue and then slide the rivet into place. 100% perfectly symmetrical results every time. That toe joint was bad, or maybe it fell off. Anyway, these two dial looking things make a much cooler toe joint. Okay, the foot also needs some mini toes that stick out between the main toes. I have this piece from my kitchen sink which I will complement with a plastic toy and a ratchet bit and a bit of filling. I have this transformer armor piece which will be the piston cover on the mini toe. Just needs a bit of leveling out. I also add these lumpy round joints to the side of what I'm calling the sink toe. Dun, now to actually build some dun, pistons. Dun, dun. Oh my gosh, no, look out, it's a shark. Wait, don't skip this ad until you've read the description and decided you're okay with your ice piece giving that data. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, the shark based VPN with rows upon rows of sharp, powerful features to keep you safe online. Are you quote unquote borrowing your neighbor's Wi Fi or using public Wi Fi? Secure and protect your data with next level encryption. Maybe you're just sick of your ISP harvesting and selling your browsing data. That's right, your data is worth real money and I don't think you can sell it yourself. And really, how much of your browsing habits are you comfortable sharing with the government or big internet anyway? You can also use Surfshark to connect with servers in different countries to access new streaming libraries. That's right there, bud. You can watch Canadian TV without having to hop in the car and cross the border, eh? Surfshark has thousands of RAM-only servers with a strict no-logs policy. They don't keep any of your private stuff. And there's Kill Switch, which literally bites your internet connection in half if the VPN is dropped, so you never accidentally browse unsecured. If you need a bigger boat, there's Multihop, which uses two VPN servers so you can browse securely twice at the same time. And there's no limits, you only need one account to secure all of your devices. Check out the link in the description and use my code for 83% off. Hmm, pretty good percentage. You also get 3 extra months for free, which is 100% off. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Start surfing with... 
Oh my gosh, I just got it. Surf. Like surf the net? Oh man, that's clever. Now to actually build some pistons. I have a lot of really sweet cylindrical bits which I stack together in various configurations. These ratchet attachments really look like machined metal, since they are. I have no idea what this like lathed brass piece is, but it's too sweet to not use somehow. I try to give each combo a rounded end so it can sock it into the build. Finally, these little car kit bits match perfectly to these little brass gizmos. No idea how I'll use them, but I just think they're neat. Alright, so I've made one cool big toe and one nifty sink toe. Now I just need to make these seven more times. This is my second hurdle. I got the brilliant idea to make a mold and cast them. I lay out all the pieces into this frame, which I thankfully had from the last time I made a mold. I also include this candle. What? You don't put a candle in your molds? This is going to act as a plunger for the resin, and it's guaranteed to not end in disaster. I got the idea from the Dark Power. That guy casts everything. I use some other random detailed cylinders as vents. If they end up getting cast, it will be a happy byproduct. I toss in this old pen, which I will then remove so that it ends up making this seam line to seal off the candle plunger. I felt so smart at this moment. Speaking of reverse sinking elements, here are some nuts and mega blocks pieces which are going to be my registration keys, or whatever they're called. With the bits set in, I built up a mega blocks wall and seal it with hot glue. Now to save on silicone, I cut up a bunch of old molds to use as filler. You can see by how many molds I have made in the past, I clearly have a lot of experience, so this should go smoothly. Lube up those feet picks, I mean feet bits, in mold release and then, okay, this is the third hiccup. I went to a real life sculpting and casting store to buy these supplies. First thing I noticed, the kit production date was over six months ago, and I know the silicone only has about six months of shelf life. I asked the staff if they had any others, or if this would be fine. Well, they didn't have any others available, and they said, quote, that product isn't very good anyway. Like, what? Suggesting that yes, it may be expired, but even if it was new, it wouldn't matter because it's bad, but yet they sell it. So yeah, I bought it. Here we go. Opening up the blue half, that looks good. Now the pink half, hmm, that seal is looking awfully snug, like some internal pressure has changed maybe. Hmm. Okay, well, it's not fully solid, just getting into that runny bubblegum stage. Gonna forge ahead here and mix up the first batch. Yes, the only way to do this is awkwardly with an extra cup. I am an expert, you can disagree in the comments if you want. Now for that first glorious pour. Oh, yeah, that is some cursed bubblegum lava. So much thicker than expected. Normally you want the silicone to fill up a corner and flow across the pieces. This wasn't really flowing, so let's just stab the toe. Don't want any bubbles in there. Slap on the old mold chunks and then seal them in with another batch. Yeah, that's pretty thick. Wait overnight and then demold time. Pop the frame away and peel back the rubber. Hey, that's a pretty good capture. No significant bubbles, yeah, feeling pretty good about this. I clean up some of the flashing and overhang so the second half of the mold won't get caught in and under the first. There was a problem here, but I haven't noticed it yet. Have you? After trimming, I re-add the bits, rebuild the frame and re-lube it with the release agent. Round two of Evil Pepto-Bismol. Mix it up, pour it on. I do find these little ribbons satisfying, but the thickness remains an issue. I resort to pushing the new silicone around as I place in the old chunks. Yeah, so it's bad and chunky looking, but it should work. Another night and we crack it open. Hey, not too shabby. Let's set up the first resin pour. I cut in a few channels to let the resin flow between each section. The candle will come down like this and it will fill up from the bottom. The resin is in two parts as well and what in tarnation? <laughs> what is this? A frozen resin treat? Okay, we can break the ice and then... <laughs> oh no, I don't think that's how it's supposed to look. I'm gonna try it anyway. I add this black pigment, mix up the two halves, and then pour it in. This stuff cures quickly, so I need to be fast with the candle. Ah, a blowout. Oh boy. After that was cured, I cracked it open. Hey, that detail doesn't look too bad. All right, uh, wait, why is it so thick? Oh my gosh, look at that mold slippage. I'm officially producing Forge World quality models at home. And the heel, full of air, sex, and hollows, just like a bird? 
Huh, this Titan's gonna have platform shoes. Does anyone know why this happened? Okay, round two. This time, I clamped the mold much better to avoid blowouts or bowing and slipping. Here we go. Okay, that's better. Still kinda thick. Here's the progression so far. Each attempt is getting better. According to my measurements, they're still too thick. I'm going to add more bracing to the toe area of the mold and try again. And again, and again, and again. You know, before we get to these results, I just want to take a moment to appreciate my patrons. Thank you for supporting the channel. All right, so I think the mold making was not a success. Each half of the mold was too thin and floppy and couldn't handle the mass of resin, causing it to bow out and create a pocket between the two halves. I should have used more silicone, more old scraps, or both to make each half much thicker and less flexible. So now I'm out 50 bucks and have a bunch of big clunky platform shoes. Hey, maybe I should hollow them out and stick aquariums in there. You can see how conceptually these feet would have been the ultimate size 14 Sigma Chad Titan stompers, but yeah, what do you think? Should I try to remake the mold or take another approach? Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Please don't make fun of my chunky feet. If you enjoyed watching me build one cool toe and then fail at making seven more, please consider subscribing. Remember, our goal this year is to pass the official Warhammer channel to become the biggest miniatures channel on YouTube. Do you want epic behind the scenes and just an all around solid community? Check out my Patreon and see if one of these support options is right for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Get the mug. It's for your workbench.